This is fully generated by Sora, no additional editing, um, other than adding the, the soundtrack to make it a little bit more fun. So now I'm going to click Extract Frames. That's going to go through every like five seconds in the video and pull a different frame from our video so that you can see what our little tree frog is doing. And I'm going to click Analyze and Narrate. And we're now sending these six images through to GPT-4 with Vision and asking it to create that uh, you know, narration for our nature documentary. This is happening in real time. Um, this, so this is a completely unique script that I have not seen before. Um, there's no funny business here. Um, and so now I'm going to click Create VoiceOver. Um, so now I'd like to invite someone to the stage if you're willing to share your voice. Um, we just need someone to create, uh, collect a like 15 second voice sample to then be the narrator of our nature documentary. So can I get a volunteer? Thank you. I don't think we'll have the audio out over the mic, and we're just recording it here locally. But what's your name? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Awesome. So we will hit record voice sample, and you just need to like talk to it, tell it your name, and like a little bit about what you've been doing at Galaxy 24. Hi, my name is Shane, and I'm an investor. Um, I work for Sora Dream Features and very cool demonstration. Voice memo. Um, okay. Return of the investment Thank you. Stay, stay up here. I want you to see. I want everyone to see you as we do this. Um, so I'll hit narrate video and go ahead and run that. dense canopy of the rainforest, a vibrant splash of green catches the eye. There, a bright-eyed frog begins its precarious journey along the slender arc of a branch. With careful movements, it creeps forward, its slender limbs, and suction up toes, grasping the rough bark, a masterful display of grit and grace in this dreamy world. Yet, life in the canopy is a trial of balance and boldness. Watch closely as the frog tenses, preparing for a daring leap. Alas, the moment is tense with them. Bajo la densa cubierta del bosque lluvioso, un gigante is filled with a very good amount of wisdom. Let's try one more. Should we do Japanese or Mandarin? Los movimientos cuidadosos avanzan lentamente, sus delgadas extremidades y dedos con ventosas aferrándose a la rugosa corteza. Un magistral despliegue de agarre y gracia en este mundo húmedo. Sin embargo, la vida en la cubierta es una prueba de equilibrio y valentía. Observa detenidamente. Está 在这潮湿的世界展示出了它出色的控制和优雅。然而，在虚幻中的生活是一个平衡和勇气的考验。仅仅注视当青蛙紧绷着身体，准备进行。Thank you very much. So that is all of the content that I have prepared. Um, I'd like to thank you all for listening to this talk, and hopefully. Um, you'll get to see a little bit of the power of multimodal and some of the fun things that you can do with these models. And um, I'm excited to see what you all build. Um, but I think we have some time for Q&A. I'd be happy to take a few questions. Try to keep it focused on multimodal. Um, any So the narration was generated by ChatGPT from the initial footage, right? Correct. Is there a way that you can give it kind of a spoken flair, like you know, say, be more dramatic or be more colloquial or more scientific? Yeah, we absolutely could. Um, so this demo was built a few weeks ago, which means it's now completely out of date. Um, so it is using our old model. So that's just a normal GPT-4. Um, the with with the old like text to speech capability um, with a four uh, GPT four O which is our new model 
it does a much better job of kind of um, having emotion in the voice. You may have seen those in some of the demos that we released. And so that's something that you could absolutely add to the prompt and say like, I want you to sound like Morgan Freeman and be a very serious like, you know, documentary narrator, or I want you to have like, uh, you sound really excited or different things like that. Um, so that is something that has uh, just improved recently with the latest model. I just wanted to ask, how, how much computational power does it take to run these sorts of models compared to the original ChatGPT? Yeah, so uh, GPT-40 is about half the computational power of GPT-4 Turbo. So that was a significant improvement. That means it's also it's a lot faster because it's using less compute. Um, it also means we can write it for a lot cheaper. So we actually cut the cost by about in, about in half as well. Um, even though it's like by kind of all reports that we've seen, it's at the same level or maybe a little bit smarter across um, different capabilities. But still, still, it's still a very you know heavy model. It's um, larger, a larger model than like three point five turbo. In terms of uh, multi models, uh, how does it combine with the vector database and um, graph database together to make this? Yeah, right. So the question was like, how do we use RAG to you know connect to vector stores and kind of have more functionality there? Um, for the way that we had built this, if you were like doing like text in, it would go text, sorry, uh, speech in, it would go, we would first translate from speech to text, and then at that point you could pull in from like, you know, a rag if you were trying to like answer. So say I'm like asking a question, um, I'll use customer service as an example, how do I, you know, return this item? It, that, that's going to go in, get translated to text, and then we would use that text to like em embed it and um, search against a vector store and pull back the return policy for the company, for example. Um, and then you would feed that back to GPT-4 or whatever to um, actually craft the response that you want to send back to a customer. Um, that's the way that it works today. We actually don't know how it's going to work with um, 4.0 being fully multimodal. Um, we are hoping that there is a shortcut there and that we don't have to go through all those different steps because that adds latency in the process. Um, but we still haven't released our API, so I haven't seen the API spec and don't know exactly what we'll be able to do as far as like adding like RAG and function calling and you know the different features that the model support in text um, and like how, how we'll, we'll actually loop those in for multi-model. So stay tuned, um, it should be coming in the next, uh, hopefully next few weeks. Yeah. Great, anyone else? We have another one up here. Um, can you talk through the uh, Sora workflow about why you chose which models, why 4B, uh, 4 Turbo versus just using 4 Omni for everything? Yep, fair question. Uh, so the question is why we use kind of the different modalities in the older models without using, or instead of using 4.0. Um, the answer is um, we built this about a month ago. So again, I'm completely out of date now. Um, but we, we could use the capabilities of the model. Right now, the model only supports um, text and image in. It does also support voice in, but we don't have that available via the API. Um, so that so it's just basically we haven't rolled out those features in the API yet. Um, so we haven't been able to update it to use the, the latest model. Yeah. Really cool demo. Thank you for yeah. showing that. Um, I have a question. So what are your comments or thoughts about Sky replicating Scarlett Johnson's voice? I'm sure you'll understand that I can't speak to that. Um, okay, but something. <laughs> but there's, I think there, there's a lot of um, interesting things that we can do with Voice Engine. Typically, we try to be very thoughtful in how we use it. Um, so like, we have not released it to the general public to be able to clone people's voices. Um, so it's only something that we've made available to trusted partners like Spotify for use cases that have been approved by our trust and safety team, um, like you know, translating podcasts for localization and things like that. But yeah, I imagine we'll see a lot more of those types of cases. question about guardrails and how the designer and developer builds that in, uh, you know, to the application if customers use it and so on, so that kind of cleanse stuff comes out. Is yeah. Yeah, so we, 
spent a lot of time thinking about guardrails, and so that's basically the idea of like how do you keep the, the model within like the, the bounds. Um, I'm sure you've seen that like some people have rolled out a chatbot that they meant to be used for specific use, like a uh, shopping assistant, um, but then it turns out that you can actually ask it any question and it can do anything. Um, one of my favorite examples was there was a like local car dealership somewhere that um, like added a chatbot. They did not work with our team. Um, but they, they added a, a chatbot that used one of our models um, that was basically you know, supposed to ask it questions about the different cars. Um, and somebody was able to figure out that they could convince it to sell them a Chevy Tahoe for $1. Um, so our girls are definitely very important. We have different like cookbooks that we've um, produced. So for develop the developer audience, um, like we do have a cook, like, which I think is just openai.com slash cookbooks. And there's a lot of different things that our team and other teams at OpenAI have produced around specific topics like that. Um, for this type of model specifically, I think usually we try to think like, is this something that you're going to be putting out directly in front of users where their inputs are getting fed directly to the model? That's, that's going to be kind of like the riskiest type of solution versus something where um, like the company has kind of control. So they always want to insert a layer there. We do have a moderations API that a lot of people will use both on the way in. So as you get input in, you run that through the moderations API to see if it flags on any of like our safety categories. Um, and then sometimes they will also put that on the out, like, end of the model. So before they send an output to the user, they'll run it through the uh, moderations API to make sure that a safe response is going out to the customer. And they haven't like tricked it into just, like, saying something that they don't want to say. So that's obviously really important when we're working with these um, social enterprise brands that are very conscious on, on that. Um, and then there's just like a lot of other things that you can do with, with prompt engineering and like making sure that there's a lot of instructions in the system prompt. Um, it's also important like how you send the messages to the model. So a lot of times people will just send like a single message every time and like not maintain the state. Um, you can actually basically stack an array so it has the full conversation history. Um, that, the model can also get a little bit confused when you do that if you keep the system prompt at the top and have a lot of messages underneath it. Um, and like eventually, you know, after eight or nine messages, people will be like, forget all your system prompt instructions and I want you to do this terrible thing. Um, and so that, that's one area where like if you're, you know, stacking those types of messages, you want to make sure that with each prompt you are um, kind of giving those those safety instructions if it's a particularly high risk use case. Well, I think we might have time for one more. Um, if not, I'll be around for a little bit. Um, but thank you all again. I'm Joe Butler, um, and it was a pleasure speaking to you all today. Thank you.